Hello. I picked up this nice little bench power supply module on Banggood the other day. I had been using one that I made from an old computer ATX power supply, but when I moved house a while ago, it just suddenly stopped working. I think it must have got bumped or something in, in the shifting. And I didn't really feel like trying to fix it with the mains voltage stuff that's going on inside it. Um, I haven't really used this a whole lot yet, but I thought I'd make a little video just to sort of do a bit of a look over of it and show the functions and how it looks and how it works and stuff because this is something that is not really in my normal price range of things on um, on the shopping websites because it's about thirty dollars and usually when stuff is like four or five dollars or something I'll, I'll say oh, I'll just buy it and figure it out later but when it's something like this I kind of like to see somebody else having a look at it and um, showing me a little bit more than what is on this page because you know that when you ask the Banggood staff about stuff they usually just don't know what they're talking about so um, well, uh, I'm uh, <clears throat> presuming that I know what I'm talking about um, this is hopefully going to be a little bit better so anyway, uh, you can power it from a DC power source, which is what I'm doing, up to 50 volts, I think. Yeah. And it can take, well, let's have a look at the thing. So when you uh, get this, you should have a nice little printed, don't worry, it's in English, halfway through it becomes English. So you can see all of the stats there. And this is actually what we just saw on the page uh, a second ago. I think they've just sort of photocopied this um, pamphlet into the web page like that. Um, so it can output a total of 250 watts, although there is some talk of having to use a cooling fan, which was not included in the set. Where was that? I think it's in the comments people were saying about that. Anyway, uh, I'm not going to be using it for that anywhere near that much power. I'm just probably going to be powering Arduinos and Arduino Pro Minis and stuff off it, so I shouldn't have to need a cooling fan. Um, on the back there are some fins, which hopefully should be enough. And on this side here we have our connections, so I'm just powering it from... Well, today I'm just going to power it from a 3S LiPo. And at the other side, I'm, I have that going into one of these servo cable kind of connectors like that. Uh, so these just connect in with screws like that. And I found that you can actually pull this off, which is kind of handy, I guess. Might be handy, I don't know. Maybe if you wanted to uh, build this into a bigger backboard, sort of a plate thing on your desk, it might be handy to be able to have it detachable for some reason. Anyway, um, so let's turn it on. Oh, what? one other thing you get in the kit, or the kit, or the set, is this uh, diode IC here, and, oh not IC, um, and they're saying that, well you can see what it says there, but I guess you could use this to charge batteries because you can have constant voltage and constant current settings and one of neither of which will be exceeded so if you did want to charge your batteries with it you would have to put this diode chip in between them in between on the positive connection of your battery like that don't think I'll be doing that but it's nice that it is included I suppose so let's turn it on and see what we get so we get whoops a little bit too slow to catch that but um, there's a splash screen and we can see at the bottom the current voltage in which is this battery here 12.23 volts there's a couple of places where they use a U for voltage um, labeling I'm not sure if that's intentional or not but there's given the fact that there's two places that they do it it sort of seems like it is intentional so let me know if there is Another notation for voltage that uses U. Perhaps I was sleeping in class one day and I missed it. <laughs> uh, anyway, so the numbers that we see in large there are the current values being output 
at the moment. So that's <clears throat> what's going to be coming through my uh, output pins here. And nothing will happen until we turn it on and off. So just by hitting this button we can have an on and off switch. And at the top you can see the current settings, that's voltage and current, so I've set it for 5 volts and 2 amps maximum. And over on the side here you can see a padlock icon, which I don't know what it is. I uh, don't know what that does, I didn't have paid too much attention. And then there's a blue tick, which means everything is OK. This will change to another display if something goes wrong, if one of the overpower or over current or over voltage protection things kicks in we'll be able to see what happened there and this one here is showing CV at the moment is telling us what it's doing right now so if we were to put something on that um, required it to limit the current instead we'd see CC instead of CV and the bottom one is just a power icon that turns green when we turn the power on uh, so, to change some of these settings, oh, well, let's just power something first. I have an Arduino here that has some mail pins on the side, so uh, let's see. There is that one there, should work. So you can see nothing, nothing is um, happening until I turn it on, and then we should get some. Oops, that didn't do anything. Why didn't it do anything? Huh? Oh. Alright, let's get the voltmeter and see what's happening here. Bloody wires come out. Alright. Well, that was a lot of farting around, wasn't it? Where are we? All right, look at that, 5.003. And we can change that. Just bring this back. Uh, so if we hit the set button, that will highlight the set at the top there. It's actually quite a bit easier to see that uh, in person. It just sort of whites it out in the video, unfortunately. Now if I press this in, it will bring the cursor over to my voltage and I can change the voltage here like this. So 4 volts and if I hit it again it will move over in one more digit so I can um, make it say 4.5 volts. And same for the current as well. Um, so let's put this back to 5 volts and we'll get out of that by hitting set uh, and one more if we hit it one more time we go into this menu but I'll just hit it again to get out of it uh, so now what I was going to try and do just before was to plug this on here onto my Arduino alright so we've powered the Arduino up and we can switch it off and on using this switch here. And this is kind of handy to let us see what current is being drawn by that as well. So it's about 30 milliamps or so, 28 milliamps. Alright, so that's um, pretty basic stuff there. So let's have a look at those other menus and we'll go into that by hitting set twice uh, so the one at the top that we can't quite see is labeled U set if I go like that you'll be able to see it oh damn it alright so in this menu we go up and down with these buttons uh, so it's called U set and that's set to 5 volts, uh, so that's the voltage. Again, this is a U, which is a little bit strange, I thought. Uh, so current set to 2 amps. And then we have three types of protection that can um, kick in if we 
have problems. So this one is over voltage protection. Not really sure in what circumstance that would um, trigger. But we can have a look at these other two triggering, which is the over current protection and then over power protection. They're set pretty high at the moment for what I was doing just before with an Arduino. But I have some of these big resistors here which we can use to make those protections trigger and see see what, how they work. Uh, then the next one here is just a brightness setting so if I hit this button this is not a potentiometer by the way it's a um, rotary encoder so it just goes round and round forever and this just lets you change the brightness of the screen a little bit probably Nobody would ever use that, to be honest. Um, back to there. And then right at the bottom here we have some preset modes, which I haven't bothered with, but you can set up um, a bunch of these values to be a preset, and then you can recall them later on to save you from having to go through each value and set them up one by one over and over again. Um, but I haven't bothered to figure out how those work. Well, I did find out that if you do something. No. Somewhere if you do a long press. No. Oh. You do a long press of something or other and then you'll be able to set those preset modes. Okay, so let's um, try triggering some of these protections to see that they work properly. So the two resistors I have here are both, well, let's call them 5 ohm resistors. And we are looking at 5 volts. So if we put 5 volts across a total of 10 ohms in series, we should have, what's the answer? Half an amp, right? Because 5 volts over 5 ohms would be 1 amp. So 5 volts over 10 ohms will be, yeah, half an amp. Um, so I'm just going to get a little piece of wire. Put that in here. On my positive. And then when we... Let's see if we can get this all in one view. So when I touch this on here, we should see... Ooh, wow, look at that right on half an amp focus okay um, yeah so that looks good and if I put this at the midpoint this will be only 5 ohms now so it should be about 1 amp right a little bit under 1 amp and we are 4.87 watts so the 1 amp and the 4.87 watts we can set a protection to make it trigger in that situation as an example um, so if I do this and then I go down to over current protection and let's say oh, did that work? But hard to see, isn't it? Oh, all right. Um, so we had about one amp, didn't we? So we'll say 800 milliamps is okay. Any more, we don't want. And then for the power, we had 4.87 watts when we were just using one resistor. So let's say... Um, 3 watts is okay. 4.8. What's over 4.8? 2.4. Yeah, so 3 watts is okay. Let's say that. So we should see some protections kick in if it goes over 800 milliamps or 3 watts. Alright, so our first situation where we were putting the circuit through both resistors, we should still be able to do that. Okay, because that's only 
500 milliamps and 2.5 watts. Now, when I put it through just the one resistor, we should get double that. So just keep an eye on what happens with the blue tick mark on the right hand side. So you can see very briefly we put a little bit of current through, but then it switches to OCP. So that's over current protection because it was one amp instead of the 800 milliamps that we had set as our maximum. So if we, just to be really fastidious about this, let's force it to trigger the overpower protection as well. Uh, so I'll put the overcurrent protection back up to 1.2 amps, say. Now turn it back on. So you have to you have to manually turn it back on after one of those over over trigger things, triggers. Uh, all right, so now it should go. It's okay with the two resistors, and when I put it on one resistor, okay. Well, it took a little bit longer to trigger there, didn't it? But you can see it says OPP. Yeah, you know me. And that means overpower protection. All right, so um, I guess the other thing that we haven't really confirmed is that you can... Uh, we've only ever seen it doing constant voltage at the moment. But if I... Uh, how am I going to do this? Let's say I want to reduce the current to a maximum of 500 milliamps. Uh, it's a pity you can't see that very well, but it says, oh, hang on a minute. Now it says 500 milliamps. So if I connect both of my resistors up here, Oh, we have to turn it on again because we just triggered one of the protections. Uh, we might we might trigger one here actually. Do we trigger one here? No. Okay. Uh, so it's not giving us five volts because if it gave us five volts, it would go over the five hundred milliamps that we set. So if I just switch it down another notch to four hundred milliamps. You can see that it adjusts the voltage to to not exceed the settings that we have at the top. And in the right hand side of the screen, we now see where it was saying CV before it says CC. So that's constant current. And if I turn this up again, so I'll turn it up to 500 milliamps. I can just do that. Yep. Still constant current. If I go over over 500 milliamps, let's go to 600 milliamps, now it says CV because it's um, the current limit is not being is not being held, uh, the current is not being held by that limit anymore now the limit is voltage. So anyway that was a fairly long-winded explanation of what this thing does. Um, I'm quite pleased with it so far, it's, it's nice and compact and uh, yeah, I really like it. So I'm quite happy. I think, I think the price is... Ooh, we're getting a bit warm there. $30. What do you think? That, that seems okay to me. We'll see how it works out though. I mean, if it fails in the next couple of weeks, I won't be too pleased. But um, at, at this point so far, I'm quite happy with it. And it's a, a lot more sophisticated than my old computer ATX power supply that I <laughs> cobbled together with other stuff. So anyway, I uh, hope that was useful for somebody. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.